Welcome back. We are in conversation with uh, EIB President uh, Werner Hoyer. Thank you so much for joining us, Pleasure. sir. Uh, let's talk about your engagement in India. You have opened uh, a exclusive uh, uh, center uh, of the bank here in India. So what uh, will be your focus areas uh, in India going forward and what are the sectors that you'll be looking at uh, in India? Well, as I said, I believe uh, there should be a strategic partnership between India and the European Union and that needs to be further elaborated and, and deepened. And if that is the case, then the dim financing dimension will play a significant role. On the other hand, I mean, I've, I've stressed the importance of the EU-India relations and the EIB-India relations clearly. On the other hand, in view of this huge country, its huge investment needs, the, the business potential here, I develop a certain humility. There, although we are the biggest multilateral bank in the world, we are very small. But it's not a question of volume. It's a question of cooperating and developing ideas together on the basis of shared values and interests. If I talk to the Prime Minister, if I, when I talked to the Prime Minister yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, I realized that when it comes to issues like energy efficiency, renewables, climate change activities, urban development, water sanitation, I could continue. These priorities are exactly the one which our governors expect from us to pursue. Mm -hmm. And you were the pioneers in things like green bonds, which... Uh, we were the pioneers in green bonds. We were the first one more than 10 years ago to issue the first green bonds around the world. And until today, uh, where the market has boomed, mm -hmm. we are still the largest uh, issue of green bonds. And since we are so clearly devoted to uh, environmental issues uh, by applying environmental standards everywhere and social standards everywhere, but also by specifically targeting uh, environment and climate oriented projects. Mm -hmm. We have pledged to do 35% of all projects outside the European Union in the context of climate change. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the priority setting of the Indian government uh, is, uh, is very welcome. And I mean, if, if climate effects go trans, uh, trans border uh, without being, being limitable to, to, to individual countries, the effect, the effectiveness of climate change mitigation efforts has no borders either. So mm -hmm. if we can achieve progress on, on climate change mitigation, then it doesn't matter whether this takes place in India or in, in, in France. I'm, I'm very encouraged by the approach taken by the, by the Indian government and by this, let's say, can-do approach that is visible here. Right. Uh, India is not a sleeping giant. India is acting and there you want to be part of an exercise because we all can learn from it. So, so uh, uh, give us a sense of uh, how EU and EU-based companies look at India given the current context of the kind of policies that this government uh, has taken up, specifically related to the economy. Uh, what kind of perception does India has, have as far as uh, 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 its business climate is concerned? Well, I think uh, as a observing banker, I should mm -hmm. not go too much into the details. Mm -hmm. This is for my colleagues in the corporates, uh, in, the, in the real economy to, to address. But I would say um, this resolve to thoroughly modernize the country and society here mm -hmm. is, is enormous and being soon going to be the most populous nation in the world, this is going to set standards for others. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very important to cooperate from the beginning and um, the uh, uh, Indian government has shown that it is uh, able to implement. Mm -hmm. Had you asked me a year ago, would demonetization function? Mm -hmm. I would not have been that sure. Mm -hmm. And I admire what has been achieved. Mm -hmm. And the same is, is true for the, for the tax reform. Mm -hmm. So under the present circumstances, fast movement in India seems to be possible. And that is encouraging. Right. And therefore, we should take the opportunity. Okay, two quick questions, on, again, on the India strategy. Uh, uh, will you be uh, interested in uh, raising rupee denominated bonds in overseas markets? And, and is there any plans to invest in private projects uh, in, 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 in India? We don't have any problems with private projects. So mm -hmm. this is something that, that is development, um, developing. I mean, India is uh, very, very interesting for us also as a... a as a te technology hub. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of uh, interests of Indian partners in European technology, but nowadays it's the same way vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Therefore, I would, I would think there is quite some potential in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the question of issuing of, uh, or refinancing in, in national currency, that is always a very important and difficult question for us, is also something to do uh, with both sides of the balance sheet. You have to balance these things out. But uh, we, are, we are refinancing in uh, more than 10 currencies around the world. And if, if the market in India is growing, mm -hmm. I don't see a fundamental reason not to do it. Since you are here to attend the second annual general meeting of uh, the NDB, uh, let, let's get some sense uh, from you regarding how these institutions would function. Because uh, these are fairly new institutions. You have uh, the NDB, you have the AIIB. What, according to you, are the, are the you know, uh, immediate challenges for these new multilateral institutions which have come up uh, in the past couple of years? EIB, the EU bank, has supported the development of these two big new development banks from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, Asia is such a huge region, and if you put it in context with the other emerging markets, it's a huge potential, and therefore there is space for more than one bank, no doubt about that. Um, setting up something like this, a new, from scratch, so to speak, uh, would make me very ambitious. Right. Because uh, after 60 years of history of the EU bank, I am not arrogant enough to say you must learn from us, but I would invite them to learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I told at this conference, um, it is easy to begin as a lean institution and be lean for a while, but sooner or later mission creep, uh, creep comes in and all of a sudden uh, your leanness is gone and you get over bureaucratized and your procedures and processes do not fit anymore to your growing size and to the needs of a, a very, very advanced bank. So uh, we are observing with greatest interest uh, how this is being done both in Beijing and in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been cooperating with them from the beginning. Uh, as a matter of fact, we, in, in the, the case of AIB, we have been uh, physically present in, present in the development of the bank. Um, and as far as the, the uh, round of presence of the multilateral development banks uh, is concerned, we were among those who insisted on the inclusion of the two new banks into that family from the beginning because they should be, feel part of that global structure of multilateral development banks. Right. My last question, and this is again uh, related to uh, India-EU relationship. Uh, uh, one of the uh, main features of India-EU commercial relationship that we have seen over the past couple of years is related to a free trade agreement which both these parties have been negotiating. But we have not seen much progress. Obviously, the negotiations have happened, multiple rounds have happened, but things are not going anywhere. Now that uh, the European Commission is concentrating on the Brexit process at the moment, the negotiators will be busy there. Uh, could this uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, trade deal which we have been negotiating, is there a risk that that could go in a, into a cold storage now and, and, and perhaps uh, uh, you know, not, uh, we may not see any traction on the talks on India UFTA? I, I'm not worried in this respect. I believe the situation is, of course, difficult. Brexit is a burden on the, on the European Commission as the chief negotiator. On the other hand, the Trade Commissioner is very active around the world and sees this situation also as an opportunity now mm -hmm. because the, the window of opportunity for striking new deals with our main tra the main trading blocks for us outside Europe and North America will not be open forever. So it's time to move forward. Uh, in addition to that, the bilateral investment uh, treaties between many individual European countries and India are running out. Mm -hmm. We need a new basis for our cooperation for investment and trade. And Could uh, that impact investments because that was well, one concern? Of course, because uh, we, we need to have a clear legal basis. And if mm -hmm. the individual in, uh, treaties are not valid anymore, mm -hmm. then we must find a new basis. And um, I uh, believe that we must both wake up and open up. And uh, we, we must see what are the priorities and the, the, the criteria for, for, the, for the other side. For instance, for us, environmental criteria, social criteria, sustainability criteria are of utmost importance. Uh, so fair international trade must be organized and cast in, in, in agreements. And I call for flexibility on, on both sides because uh, we have a unique opportunity and the summit, the next summit between India and the European Union will provide a wonderful opportunity to make fast progress.
So that's the message that has come from the EIB president, and that is uh, India and the EU must uh, wake up and open up and engage in all fronts of the diplomatic relationship. Thank you for joining CNBC TV 18.